Governor Saludo calls for collective action against native values confronting Nigeria. Anambra State Nigeria Red Cross Society Chairman Professor Kachi urges stakeholders to join campaign on disaster reduction. Federal lawmaker Obidiwe seeks more interventions in riverine communities as flood level rises. European countries increase energy security to protect gas pipelines. Before the news in detail, here is a special message. Governor Chukuma Saludo has come for a total turnaround of maintenance of the Anambra State economy and promotion of core Igbo values. Let's give him maximum support for the tax ahead. Good morning. Welcome to the Breakfast News on ABS Television. I am Priska Mongo. Governor Chukuma Saludo has said that only sincere and visionary leadership is capable of maximizing the untapped potential of Nigeria as a nation. Governor Saludo was speaking in Orca on the occasion of Nigeria's 62nd Independence Day anniversary celebration held at the Dr. Alex Ikweme Square, Orca. Valentine Mbaduha has the details. According to Governor Saludo, there is a great need for patriotic and progressive Nigerians to come together and build a future for the nation. He harped on the need to rediscover the values on which the nation was founded and collectively win the war against vices confronting the nation and regretted that Nigeria is operating largely below 10% of its potential. 62 years ago, some might wonder what do we have to celebrate. And I would say we'll celebrate our nation as the most popular black nation on earth and which we must all now fight to preserve and to grow to become the largest black nation on earth. And that is what it is destined to be. Yes, we celebrate our youths. We celebrate all those who toil every day to make this nation great. We celebrate the ordinary Nigerian, the poor, the vulcanizer, the woman who sells by the roadside, who tries to put food on the table without indulging in criminality. We celebrate all those who believe that a new Nigeria is possible. And today, at this second anniversary, for me, it's personal because I'm an independent child. And seeing how we have gone and where we have been as a nation whose past is more glorious than its present, this must end. And I call on all patriotic progressives of Nigeria that this is the time to unite. Next year is an election year. I think it's the time for soul searching, for us to rediscover the purpose of public service, for us to rediscover the essence and why our founding fathers fought for us to be an independent nation, for us to build that black race that will be the greatest black nation on earth. We need to rediscover our purpose, and I call on all patriotic progressives to unite for the next Nigeria. Governor Saludo used the opportunity to call on India Anambra to make their individual and collective contributions towards a greater Anambra state, reaffirming the commitment of the government to make Anambra most peaceful, secured, and livable society. Governor Saludo reiterated that criminality, touting, and lawlessness has no place in Anambra state, calling on those indulging in such acts to retrace their steps. We have all the potentials to be anything that we dream it to be. We've been walking, pushing on all fronts, trying to address some of the key foundational issues to be able to live out the early sense of our dream and vision as articulated in the Soludo Solution Manifesto, the agenda to build a livable and prosperous smart mega city as Anambra. Now we have to celebrate our heroes past. We we'll celebrate all our forebears, and those who have gone before us, who we'll laid the foundation one way or the other, and on whose shoulders we stand today. But I want to say to you, Ndea Nambra, we have tried to address the foundational issues in the area of security, law, and order. Security is everybody's responsibility. Today, I call on you, Ndea Nambra, that the whole essence, what makes Anambra unique, 
is a collective, communal, individual responsibilities towards our homeland. Today, we call on that spirit of Anambra. We lift that spirit of Anambra, as we say in our state anthem, that we come together as a people. Everybody has something to contribute. Everybody has a role to play. Even on security, we say, you see something, you say something. In conclusion, my message to our people in the Anambra and to Nigeria is a call for collective action. For Anambra State and Dubai, the question every day as an itinerant people, what have you done today to make Anambra safe, livable, and prosperous? The Commissioner for Local Government, Chieftaincy and Community Affairs, Honorable Tony Collins Swabwani, gave the assurance while dialoguing with stakeholders from both communities, including their traditional rulers, at Wafarizu College of Education in Sube. Correspondent Emmanuel Chibata reports. Disputes between two individuals from both communities reportedly ensued last Sunday at Abatam Sube, resulting to communal interest leading to the vandalization of Ugo Hotel and Suites situated at Nsube. It was reported that the conflict led to severe injuries on victims who are currently receiving medical treatments, assuring that a committee will be constituted to identify the underlying causes of the conflict and address them through guiding the parties towards solutions that are mutually satisfactory and sustaining. He reminded both parties of their brotherhood, stating that the unfortunate incident should not cause war between them while pleading with them to shoot their swords and seek peaceful resolution. Honorable Mwabwane reiterated that the government of Governor Chuku Masoludo is already working round the clock to ensure that absolute peace and tranquility exist among communities of the state. If I did be as government, who could have a government at TVG or no? Who don't even know? The government at TVG or no? As we speak now, I'm not constituted to a committee. You're not believe, even a button so good. Can't do it once and for all. Call that one and let me see what you're making it. We'll be done also. On his part, the Transition Committee Chairman, Anambra East Local Government Area, Dr. Anselm Onwara, expressed worry over the unfortunate incident and pleaded with both parties to remain calm to avoid the issues escalating further. In about the traditional ruler of Nsugwe Igwe Victor Ntoka and his Umwaba Anam counterpart, Igwe George Ekwalo, thanked the state government for their urgent intervention and urged their subjects to remain calm as the government would decisively take action for peaceful coexistence. Speaking to ABS, the hotel manager, Mr. Ike Shukuzeibo, on behalf of hotel owner Chief Ameshi Okeke claimed that properties destroyed worth over 20 million naira, urging both communities to fish out the culprits who caused the mayhem and bring them to book. According to him, the hotel owner has decided to bear the damages while praying that the long-lasting peace and love between the two communities should be rekindled and built upon. It was further understood that the owner, in the interest of restoring peace, offered to bear the medical expenses of those who sustained injuries. Some hoodlums came to the hotel to destroy a lot of things, ranging from uh, the properties 
and then other things. But my workers were so apprehensive that they took refuge in the nearby bush and other areas. So on further inquiries, I was told it was only a domestic uh, issue between two persons, one from a Sube and then the other one from a the Anambra State Chairman of the Nigeria Red Cross Society, Professor Peter Kachi, has called for collective action to reduce the challenge of disaster across the country. Speaking in Oka, Professor Kachi said disaster management and risk reduction requires effective prevention, preparation, response, and mitigation approaches. Paul Izuki reports. Professor Kachi lamented that over the years, Huge human and material resources have been lost to various forms of disaster, including flooding, building collapse, fire outbreak, conflicts, environmental pollution, epidemics and health hazards, domestic, road and air accidents, among others, urging families and individuals to always keep handy, well-equipped first aid bus to attend to health emergencies, as well as fire extinguisher for prompt response to fire outbreaks why parents should be very careful how they use cooking gas and where they buy their kerosene to avoid adulteration as well as keep their deep freezers always locked to prevent children from locking themselves inside he commended anambra state government for proactive measures taken so far to mitigate flooding in the state following predictions from nigeria meteorological agency NIMET, noting that presently the state has centers to care for people who might be displaced by the flooding while the state government has equally been responsive in preventing diseases like cholera and smallpox from spreading in the state Professor Kachi called for strict implementation of government-approved building code to ensure that only professionals handle the building of any structure and that quality materials are used in the right quantities. He assured that the Nigerian Red Cross Society will continue to collaborate with the government, agencies, organizations, groups, and individuals in building capacity and sustaining disaster risk reduction activities. It is important for everybody to know how to manage disaster, how to respond to disaster, how to mitigate disaster, and how to prevent disaster. That is why it's a natural tendency. And in Anambra State, we have 28 disaster camps. And out of that camps, even our Igala brothers in Anambra West, we always major beneficiaries. Our body, we do that to make sure that they were pro properly protected as citizens of Anambra State. So disaster, there must be advocacy. Meanwhile, an Abga Chief 10, Honorable Emmanuel Uzawane, has called on the federal and state governments to extend urgent intervention to Obaru local government area as flood has sacked many families from their homes. Speaking in Oka, Honorable Uzawane lamented that the flood has devastated houses farmlands and destroyed sources of livelihood of the people worth billions of lira and appealed to National Emergency Agency NEMA and State Emergency Agency SEMA to send relief materials to the area to cushion the immediate adverse effects of the disaster, noting that more proactive measures, including dredging the river Niger, should be taken to end the perennial flooding of the area. He stood Governor Chuku Matsurudo for giant steps taken so far to reposition the state. In Oka, Paul is okay, ABS News. Students have been urged to embrace creative ideas and equip themselves with the right work ethics that will help them reach their full potential. This formed the central discourse at the second edition of Anambra State Students Congress, organized by a non-governmental organization, Future Holds Through Value Impact Foundation. The Congress, which was held in Oka and had a theme as a view of the future now, attracted senior students from secondary schools across the state, teachers, as well as the managing director of the Anambra Broadcasting Service, Sachido Bidiogu, among others. Correspondent Blessing Uchendo takes the story from here. 
Future Holds Foundation is a registered non-governmental organization founded with the aim of engaging in activities that promote all-round human development. Addressing the students, the executive director of the foundation, Mrs. Ncheta Chidube Mwachinemere, said the association targets mainly teenagers, youths, orphans, women, and single mothers whom they offer platforms to become resourceful champions of community and nation building. We are focusing on students. We call it Students Congress. Our foundation is interested in building the students into resourceful individuals that will build our nation. What we're seeing today is not, a, it's not encouraging with the state of our nation currently. We are trying to catch them young and teach them their rights. In a remark, the Director of Administration of the Foundation, Mr. Chidube Mwachine Melo, who expressed satisfaction with the large turnout of students, maintained that they are passionate about teenagers and youths and therefore deemed it necessary to educate them on the right path to follow in life. What we are doing is to change in the narrative. We want to sit down with these students to aid what the teachers are already doing in their various schools. On his part, the managing director of the Anambra Broadcasting Service, Sachido Obidegu, represented by Mr. Abuchiwozo of the News and Current Affairs Department, called on the students to always pursue and see their dreams as realizable and encouraged the teachers to put in more efforts in nurturing students to become responsible citizens. Teachers have many role to play in life of any student because um, not only impacting them. Um, uh, academic excellence on them. Teachers also need to imbibe maybe how to inculcate morals and morals on the children because uh, now the government has banned the use of the wearing of um, mini skirts in schools and uh, colleges. Counseling the participants, a guest to the program, Evangelist Nam Deze, outlined mental experimental, visual, physical, and spiritual preparations assist major things to do in order to achieve one's dream in life. Some teachers who were trained on digital skills for effective teaching and learning, including Chidera Uzochuku and Chukwemeke Iguatu, said the program exposed them to ways of acquiring skills and promised that they will continue to inculcate the right morals in the students. Some of the students who spoke to the ABS, including Ms. Chidiogo Olisa from Living World Comprehensive Secondary School, Newe, and Master Uchen Naoyamune from Igwebike Grammar School, Oka, commended the organizers of the program for the opportunity and promised to put into practice all the The member representing Anambra East and West Federal Constituency at the National Assembly, Chief Chinedu Bidigwe, has called on the federal government to immediately send relief materials to the people of the federal constituency and all the riverine communities of the state who are currently battling with flood disaster. Chibuzo Okoye has the details. Speaking to the ABS in Oka, Chief Obidigwe said that the call has become necessary in order to alleviate the sufferings of his people due to the perennial flooding. The lawmaker pointed out that he had always at the floor of the House of Representatives called for the dredging of the River Niger as an antidote for the flood that has cost his people fortunes and human lives. And caused water current to leach the coastal soils, destroying farmlands and households items which worth billions of naira. Also, the House notes that economic losses to the annual flooding of those communities as a result of shallowness of Anambra River depth cannot be compared with the cost of dredging the river to reclaim its normal depth, which will enable it to contain large flood, large volume of water whenever it emptied into the river. And as obtainable in the past before the situation we are into. Chief Obiligwe, who is the Deputy Chairman, House of Representatives Committee on Environment, commended Governor Chukuma Saludo's administration for all it is doing to salvage the situation through the Anambra State Emergency Management Agency with mega resources. He disclosed that he had been bringing relief materials for the people of the constituency to assuage their sufferings and assured that plans are in pipeline for him to bring relief materials for them this year. In Oka, this is Chibu Zokoye for ABS News. 
P2B Support Network, in collaboration with Medics for Good Governance, have organized a one-day conference for the Southeast and South South State and Local Government Coordinators. The conference, which attracted various Labour Party stakeholders in the geopolitical zones, was held at Grand Hotel Asaba, Delta State. Staff reporter Mengini Osarebe covered the event and filed in this report. The conference has its theme as Developing Grassroots Structure for Effective People-Oriented Democracy. Addressing the gathering, the Global Coordinator of Peter Obi's Support Network, Ms. Augusta Neka, disclosed that the support network, which was inaugurated on May in Abuja, has drawn over 6,700 state coordinators and 65,000 volunteer groups nationwide, while in diaspora, they have 11 countries supporting them saying that they have been able to organize three summits put together by state coordinators who have devoted their time and money in less than one month. Ms. Neka said the aim for organizing the summit was to make sure that every citizen is trained to be an electoral agent that can vote and secure their votes at every polling unit, urging the coordinators to embark on door-to-door -door training of the people at the grassroots on the good news of Peter Obi. We're going to be here to train our people. That's why we insisted that local government coordinators attend this event because we want to train you so that when you vote, you'll be able to actually train others when you go back to your local government to train others to not just recognize the Labour Party logo, but to, um, one of our board of trustee members will say, to evangelize and spread the good news of, Bill, of, of Peter Obi. So we're training you not just to recognize the, the Papa Mama Pekin logo of the Labour Party, we're also training you to go back home and evangelize, going door to door and telling people the good news of Peter Obi that he's here. In his welcome address, the POSN Chairman Organizing Committee, Mazi Ikechuku Oji, said the conference was aimed at strategizing on how to ensure that their votes are protected and count, saying that Peter Obi is the driver the party, the vehicle, while the electorate are the passenger, describing Peter Obi as a divine project. Democracy is government of the people, for the people, and by the people. So now we be the people. So if we want Nigeria to be better, it's left for us. Like when they come and they give you 5,000 naira, 10,000 for your votes. They take them for four years. What do you gain? Now you lose. So we're here to strategize on how to ensure that we vote and protect our votes. In his keynote address, the founder, Center for Value in Leadership and African Democratic Congress, Professor Patrick Utomi, represented by the Labour Party chieftain in Delta State, Ambassador Tony Ezagu, commended organizers of the summit for their commitment, saying that they are not working for P2B, rather for the masses, and called for collective effort of all to achieve their goal, describing Labour Party as people-oriented party. A Labour Party issue, but a movement of its own. Am I correct? Yes. A movement of its own. But that movement must go with the Labour Party, whether you like it or... In her speech, the Imo State POSN State Coordinator, Ambassador Lillian Ukoha, called on the support network to remain focused, available and trustworthy, saying that the network is an appointment with destiny that requires people of like minds to achieve their set goal. In their various endorsement speech, the coordinators from Enugu, Eboi, Delta, Cross River, Rivers, Edo, Abia, Bayelsa, Anambra, and Akwaibom states expressed their readiness to change the course of this country by enthroning good governance and leaving a good legacy for their unborn children. High point of the conference was entertainment by the Royal Wings Dance Group from Asaba, Emengino Asadebe, ABS News. Norway has announced it will receive help from the UK, Germany and France to patrol the seas around its oil and gas platforms following major lakes blamed on sabotage and the subsea gas pipelines from Russia to Europe. Russia's Nord Stream 1 and Nord Stream 2 pipelines burst this week, draining huge volumes of gas into the Baltic Sea off the coast of Denmark and Sweden. The European Union said it suspected an act of deliberate sabotage had caused the damage while Russian President Vladimir Putin accused the U.S. and its allies of blowing up the pipelines. 
The attacks have prompted Norway, Western Europe's biggest oil and gas producer, to deploy its Navy, Coast Guard and Air Force to beef off oil and gas security. He stressed that Norway had no indications of direct threats, but that it was nevertheless prudent to beef up security. Norway has become an increasingly vital partner in Europe, stepping up gas production to provide approximately 30% of gas demand and becoming the most important single source of gas supply. Remember, you can follow news and programs from ABS from any part of the world by liking our Facebook page at ABS Radio Television Orca. Subscribe to our YouTube page at ABS Television Orca. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter at ABS Radio TV. Do log on to our website. It's www.absradiotv.com. To end the breakfast news this morning, a recap of the main points. Governor Saludo has called for collective action against negative values confronting Nigeria. Anna Bristi, the Nigeria Red Cross Society Chairman, Professor Kachi, has urged stakeholders to join campaign on disaster risk reduction. Federal lawmaker Obidigwe is seeking more interventions in riverine communities as flood level rises. European countries have increased energy security to protect gas pipelines. Here is the special message. Governor Chukuma Saludo has come for a total turnaround maintenance of the Anambra State economy and promotion of coibo values. Let's give him maximum support for the tax ahead. That ends the breakfast news on ABS television at this time. Thanks for watching. I am Priska Honko. Good morning and happy Sunday.